Hello and welcome. Uh, welcome to this lecture, uh, this uh, next lecture in the Triward Walk lecture series. Triward Walk, which was all about crossing borders, blending perspective uh, in the uh, in the Warren Sea area. Um, and this lecture, I will talk to you about sustainable nature-based tourism and give you my reflections from the Warren area. My name is Frans Sietzma. I'm an assistant professor at the University of Groningen, Faculty of Faithful Science. And um, I've done quite a bit of research on the Warren area, not exclusively, I've done many types of things, but uh, since we're close in Groningen to the Warren area, uh, many things in, in, uh, in my recent research have been about the Warren area. Uh, I will use three publications as a basis for this lecture. Uh, the one is uh, by Stephen Hartman and myself on sustainable tourism in the Warren Sea region, key mechanisms to overcome barriers to sustainability, which was a position paper for the Warren Academy in Leeuwarden. Uh, the second is a paper, Deep Feelings Around the Shallow Coast, uh, a spatial analysis of tourism jobs and the attractivity of nature in the Dutch Warren area, published in Ocean and Coastal Management. And uh, the third one is multi-scale mapping of cultural ecosystem services in a social ecological landscape, uh, which was published in Landscape Ecology. And uh, based on these three publications, uh, we have three publications, but we have four parts in the lecture. Uh, one is I will present the sustainable tourism framework which is conceptual, uh, then we'll dig deeper into uh, combining two perspectives, the e economic perspective and a well-being perspective on, on, on the Warren area as a tourist destination. And uh, third, we will talk about Green Mapper, which is a, a survey technique which we developed and which identifies 14 million fans of the Warren area and ask the question at some point, what role do these fans have in the governance of the Warren area? A key question and a very important thing to for you all to think about. So, and uh, the fourth path, we return to the, to the first publication and we'll talk about broader dilemmas for sustainable tourism in the Warren area. Okay. The first part, based on this uh, position paper for the Warren Academy, um, key mechanisms to overcome barriers to sustainability. And uh, I present a, a framework to think about sustainable tourism. And we, we start out with what is probably the most famous uh, uh, conceptual framework in, in tourism, uh, 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 tourism science and that is the Tourism Area Life Cycle Framework of Butler. And Butler, he had this, uh, this, this scheme, which you see here, uh, presented in this, uh, in this paper. And he said, well, any, we see on, on the vertical axis, the number of tourists on, on the horizontal axis, time, and, and we see what happens as tourism grows, as the number of tourists grows. Uh, first, we have an exploration phase in which so some artists they, they go uh, to a destination uh, which they like and um, but there's no facilities basically they're just camping and uh, or staying at local and it's just exploration uh, then there's an involvement phase in which some of the locals think oh we could we could make some facilities for people visiting us and uh, 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 have some uh, 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 lodging or in a hotel or, or some, some att attractions or whatever. And then development phase comes and more people get involved and it becomes recognized as a tourist destination and, and there's more, much more things going on and the number of tourists also grows uh, considerably. Then there's a consolidation phase in which, well, things are sort of settled down on a larger scale. And, and then, and, and this is where, let's say, the, the key point from Butler was that, well, then probably stagnation happens and then probably decline at some point because there's overinvestment and maybe borders of, 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 or uh, 
critical uh, tipping points, both perhaps in ecology, perhaps in the number of tourists, there may be over tourism, uh, there may be other destinations which become more popular, all sorts of reasons. But uh, Butler wanted to bring the point that, okay, something can grow, but it will probably also decline. So don't take it for granted that something continues to exist. And this is why it's called a, a, a life cycle uh, framework. So he, he borrowed this from, from life cycle concepts or framework from uh, economics. And um, this is what he introduced for, for the tourism areas. And at this point after stagnation, there may be decline, there may be f firm decline or a bit less decline. And there may also be, well, people may think of rejuvenation. We might reinvent ourselves, invest more, and, and then get into a, perhaps a cycle in which we can still grow, uh, a tourist area can still grow. Um, but anyway, it, it's not given, it's not automatic that, that uh, once you, you are big and developed, that uh, um, it, it, you can remain. That's basically the key, key aspect of the Butler framework. Now, in our framework, which we will extend a, uh, quite substantially on this, we will start with this framework from Butler, and we will call this the market perspective. And then we will add seven more perspectives, actually, in four quadrants. Um, so we have four parts in, uh, in math, we call them quadrants. And at the first one, we have market from Butler. Uh, but we want to stress that it, tourism is not primarily about visitors, but it's about the well-being of visitors. So it might be good to explicitly introduce that aspect into our thinking. Uh, then, since we talk about nature-based tourism, we will have to talk about ecology and about landscape. We will talk about the regional labor market and the contribution of tourism to that, but also to the, uh, talk about the contribution of tourism to livability of the residents, the local residents. And finally, in the fourth quadrant, we'll talk about tourism policy uh, and, and whether that's... Um, consensus base, whether it's a clear idea, where, where it should be heading. And the fourth aspect is the multi-level governance of the area, which involves many things far beyond tourism. Uh, and uh, we'll talk about that. So this is in general. Uh, and we will talk about the interrelation of these eight aspects in four quadrants. Now, this will become quite detailed in terms of curves, as you can see here, and we, uh, and, and we will talk about the development in time and, and different uh, vertical axes which we have in the scheme. Uh, but I will first like to present very simple in terms of pictures. So if we talk about market, we talk about, for instance, here, the number of tourists which take a ferry boat. Uh, but don't forget, tourism is about the experience, what it brings to people, the joy they have, the the, the meaningful uh, activities which they undertake, um, like this girl here jumping from a dune. Um, then in ecology, we have, for instance, in the Warren area here, we have seals are very important. We have birds in the background. Uh, the Warren area is a key bird area. Um, so the ecology is important, but also the scenery is a tourist experiences it, and that is different from um, from ecology. It's maybe related to ecology, but it's not the same. Uh, so we say ecology and landscape, and landscape more stressing the interaction with, with humans and, and the scenery aspect of it. Um, then we talk about a regional labor market, which for many tourist area, and especially for the Warren area, the most important regional labor market is not in the Warren area. It is near the Warren area, for instance, like in this city, Leeuwarden, uh, and many people in the Warren area, they work in Leeuwarden, and they don't work in the Warren area itself. So if you consider the regional labor market, you have to think about um, about people traveling to work, not living in, uh, working in the same area where they live, commuting to their, to their uh, work location. And um, also a very important thing is the contribution to livability, which you see here. You might think that this is a school class, 
but actually this is a whole the population of a whole school there on the small island of Schimmelkoog uh, from 10 years ago I think uh, but this is typical of, of uh, the, especially the Wallen Islands uh, that they struggle with the scale of things and that for instance a school may become very small only a few teachers and only a few pupils and then how do you uh, uh, sustain uh, quality but in, or in general how does tourism support livability and if the school is not uh, it has a very low quality then also tourism is at risk because then locals don't, don't want to stay there because everybody wants to give good education to the children and uh, so there's a close interrelation between livability and tourism and we should keep a keen eye on how that develops then policy in the water area for instance this is a typical picture of perhaps in 15 years ago a lot of camping uh, was much associated with the water area especially on the islands but is this where the tourism sector wants to go is that indeed what they want to sustain or as we've seen in recent years many more lodges have been built and camping has become uh, partly also a, a rich man's activity uh, and so this is all about is there among entrepreneurs and among the whole sector a clear view of where you want to go or if there's huge disparity in views then this is also that that's that's critical for tourism uh, if, if people want to if, if one segment wants to go in that direction the other wants go in that direction and still a third one wants to go another direction that's not good for uh, to develop tourism or sustain tourism and then we have the multi-level and multi-sectoral governance you see here a picture of the um, cultural power plant which was built in the in the Warren area on the Ames Harbor in the Dutch Ames Harbor very close well actually at, at the same location a few hundred meters from where the ferry uh, goes from um, Ames Harbor to Borkum so Borkum is very near you can see this uh, uh, electricity plant very clearly from uh, from Borkum also often from Schimmel Um and this was an, this is a major thing which is happening in the area the Borkum tourists were very dissatisfied with this happening still it happened and uh, you can see that although the tourism has its own power and, and, and they can develop and the tourist sector may have a clear view where, where they want to go for instance to go uh, sustain camping or whatever but then if other sectors do things which uh, which which uh, uh, put that at risk like for instance well building this coal fuel power plant or we see wind farms we see all sorts of things happening around the tourism area in the water area then that this might be at risk so how do you, you cannot um, develop or sustain tourism if you don't also address these other aspects and uh, that's a very very complex issue okay now on a more formal side if we do this a bit conceptually we we see here a, uh, a representation of, of the uh, tourism area life cycle framework with on the uh, uh, with a number of tourists on the left uh, on the vertical left axis and um, the development in time and on the right axis we have then the well-being contribution and you can see that in the uh, earlier stages of, of development, well-being and number of tourism, they just go hand in hand. But when we see more mass tourism, that's not automatically so. And generally, well-being suffers a bit because it's, uh, uh, I mean, it still rises as more people go, but the, the pure uh, regional experience gets lost a bit. And then, so the well-being contribution may not automatically be may uh, develop in the same way uh, in ecology and landscape we see the uh, landscape attractiveness on, on the right hand scale and the ecolo ecological quality on the left hand scale and uh, with the dotted lines we have the uh, landscape attractiveness which we feel that uh, th that as time progresses and the number of tourists grows then landscape attractive uh, landscape attractiveness may be 
somewhat uh, decreasing and uh, sort of steadily decreasing. More people are there, uh, more facilities being built, I just think. Um, while ecology is a bit more uh, uh, typical, you might think, uh, that, that we have uh, tipping points more. So uh, at, at, at some point, if the number of tourists increase, um, ecology may be okay, but up to a certain point, and then it falls to a lower level, and then we have still an increase, and then for, so it, it gets, it's a more bumpy road, you could say. Um, and at some point, these both these things may may um, get to a critical low level, so a critical low ecological or landscape uh, quality level, and then that is uh, a threat to sustain to tourism. So it, it, uh, tourism becomes unsustainable, and um, uh, yeah, there are nice birds sitting through the window. <laughs> I was distracted for a while. Uh, okay, so uh, that's speaking about ecological quality, right? Uh, in the third quadrant, we have the regional labor market and livability, and you can see that in general, as tourism develops in the uh, in the starting phases, the positive contribution for both uh, both the uh, the the share that tourism has in the, in the in the labor market and 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 the uh, and, and contributes to livability, but as it grows and grows, you might not that this may not be the case, and um, because there may be too too many tourists for the locals to they may be may become irritated at some point because there's so many and they can't go about with their lives, uh, and uh, uh, maybe over tourism. Uh, so there may be, there, in terms of livability, a, a downside, and um, but also tourism, how big tourism is, also depends on the rest of the economy. So although when it's and and that's also a critical thing, especially in the um, um, mainland coast area of the water. Um, where there's let's say industry like we saw this uh, this power plant and we have fisheries we have all sorts of activities you have the capital of Leeuwarden, uh, Groningen so some some cities which are near and um, for the regional labor market and, and and for tourism it's important that tourism is a substantial share of the regional labor market. And this is for sure the case on the Warren Islands, but not for sure the case on the mainland coast. And what this means is simply little attention is given, uh, little investment is 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 logic because oh, tourism that's not important to you. Why would we invest? Uh, so, and if the regional um, contribution of tourism to the to the to the, uh, the labor market is critically low. And that's a threat to tourism because you will not have investment in bicycle lanes or hotels or whatever. Uh, so that's a critical thing. And then there is the consensus in, in uh, tourism uh, policy. Uh, so we go to the fourth quadrant, policy and governance. And we first talk about the left axis, tourism consensus, whether there is a consensus about where tourism should go. And uh, well, at the start, this is logical, but at some point, when it's it, tourism develops, it it's it may become um, a, a critical lack of consensus. So the one wants to go that way, the other wants to go that way, and with the lack of consensus, so I mean, you don't have to agree on everything, but there has to be some some core in which we uh, tourism and government and I think oh, yeah, this is where we sort of should be heading. Otherwise, you might destroy the qualities by, let's say, building hotels on on, on, on sensitive sites, and which the one sees as very precious for its tourism base, and the other says, "Well, I don't know, I don't have confidence in some of those buildings." Uh, so, if there's a lack of consensus, that's basically a threat to the sustainability. And um, uh, then on the right hand side, we see the lack of integration of different policy fields, like we saw in this Borkum and and the uh, um, the coal fuel power plant case, 
and there are many other cases. So uh, where you think, oh, no, this is, uh, how is this working? Is it spreading effect to tourism? Uh, and where is the discussion? Where is the where do they sit together? Where how can we integrate uh, uh, other policies so that tourism is sustained? Now you can think of developments in time for in these axes. So you can these red dots, for instance, you can say, well, they, they, you can look at them and how they travel through the uh, uh, through these different curves, and that's our conceptual framework basically. And um, like any conceptual framework, these are just tools. I mean, this is just a tool, it's, you know, like like a pen or a, a mouse, or you know, it's something which is functional, which helps. And then this is not about writing and uh, na navigating a computer, but this is about thinking. So such a conceptual framework is meant to help our thinking about sustainable tourism in this this case. Uh, so basically i would like to uh, invite you to uh, just pause the video and to see whether you can apply this framework to a case you well know so think of a an, an, um, uh, a destination a tourism destination which you know well and see well, okay i think uh, this is a starting phase. I can put a dot here as the as, uh, perhaps here, and then I think still the landscape quality is quite okay. But then, then and then, so think about regional labor market contribution and contribution to livability, and the uh, lack of consensus which there may be in policy or not, and the uh, uh, the, the the policy integration which which uh, in, in in broad governance, and um, so. And, and then see if it works. And uh, well, if it don't work, if it doesn't work for you, then there's uh, something wrong with the tool. But that's okay. You know, in many toolboxes there are plenty of tools. So uh, I have a toolbox with at least 20 screwdrivers, and uh, if the one doesn't work, you use another. So uh, I think uh, this helped us in our study to think about uh, to sustainable tourism, and I hope it helps you. Uh, but uh, as always in science, take it serious, but not too serious. It's just something which is meant to help. It's a tool. So I will leave it at that. Uh, thank you for your attention and uh, see you in another lecture.